Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Carrie and today I'm doing my most thought-provoking books of 2019. We're going to start with the one that I read on Kindle, which is Mary C. Cole's autobiography. Mary C. Cole was a nurse during the Crimean War, uh, and she is not remembered so much as Florence Nightingale, who was a nurse during the same time, because she didn't have the money and more than likely because she was also black. She was Jamaican and traveled to Central America. I don't remember if it was Panama or Nicaragua. I think it was Panama. Where she lived for a while and learned how to treat tropical diseases such as, you know, malaria, which was kind of important. I think she also learned how to treat diphtheria. And there was something about a mustard plaster that really helped something. It's been a while since I read it, but I really liked it. Mary C. Cole writes in a very simple, engaging way. It's a little bit self-deprecating, but with that steel behind it that says, I know who I am, I know what I'm good at, and you can't tell me otherwise, because when you're dying of diphtheria, you're going to beg me to come save you, and I'm just going to laugh in your face. She would never do that, because there was actually a case where a white man was like, ah ha ha ha, you're just a black woman, you can't do anything, and then he was dying, and she went, yeah, you see that? I just saved your life, because she did actually. And I really enjoyed those moments because the triumphant moment where you can laugh in somebody's face when doing something like that is just, it's great to read about. Like I said, she also wrote in a very engaging way. I thoroughly enjoyed seeing how she traveled everywhere and how she dealt with different people, different cultures, and her own circumstances because being a black woman in the 1850s, traveling all around the world could not have been easy. She mentions at one point that the Americans basically are just these horrible human beings that shouldn't be given the name human beings. And I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not that much, which I thought was great because this was also the 1850s. We hadn't fought the Civil War yet, which means that we hadn't freed people of African descent and all that that entailed. I loved seeing just her take on the world in the Crimean War and it was very memorable the way that she talked about herself and the world around her at the time. I think she met Florence Nightingale once if I'm not mistaken but describing that and describing her interactions with these higher up people and how some of these higher up privileged white men recognized her talent and tried very much to help her but to see how little they actually could really brought to the fore the rampant racism of the time that is still rampant today but less obvious which I'm not sure which is worse. If either is worse, it just shouldn't happen. Anyway, this book really made me think about the time period and the differences between Britain and the United States at the time in how they treated people with darker skin and how that made society revolve and everything like that. Next we have Earth by David Brin. This is a science fiction that was written in 1990 and is a 50-year sort of look out so it is set in 2040 when pollution and global warming have taken over the world and humans are dying. It is a fascinating look at what could happen and a lot of it is scarily close to what we predict could happen in the next 20-30 years. I tabbed this book, I also did a review on it so I'll link that down below if you want to check it out but it really makes you think about the society we live in and the corporations that aren't doing their bit but instead blame shift to the average American, well not American, to the average Joe like you or me who's decided that we're not going to use plastic straws to save the turtles when realistically my five plastic straws in a month aren't going to save any turtles or hurt, I mean they might hurt a turtle but me getting rid of them isn't going to make enough of a difference, even though it is a good thing to do. So like I said, I will leave the review linked for this down below. Next we have the Nero duology, which includes Confessions of a Young Nero, which is the first one, and then this one, The Splendor Before the Dark. This is a historical fiction series written by Margaret George. 
about, you guessed it, Nero. The first one follows him from when he's about six and goes up until the Great Fire of Rome, and then this one takes up during the Great Fire of Rome and goes until his death. I I did really like this book. The one problem I had with it was that it had an extra POV in it that I don't think was necessary, even remotely. But beyond that, it was a very good book, and Nero as an emperor is this horrifying monster of a, of a villain that we have all grown to fear and be fascinated by. In this series, Margaret George tries to humanize him, tries to make him seem more like an actual person with feelings who made the best choices he thought he could at the time. Mind you, killing your mother and blaming an entire fire on one specific group of people doesn't seem like a good option to me ever, but I'm not an emperor, so I wouldn't know. But this one made me think about Nero specifically, as it was meant to do, but also the way that we change history with every five years that passes. It's fascinating to look at characters or people who have been vilified and to think, oh yeah, they must have done that because it's in a, you know, an ancient Roman source like Suetonius. But then to realize that that person is writing 100, 150 years later and may not have even spoken to anybody who knew that person, in this case Nero, it's, it really makes me think about the malleability of history. Malleability? Changeableness. Changeability. English is not a thing of history and how I really like things that are set in stone, but the one thing that I love the most, which is history, is one of the most fluid concepts we have. It's a lot to be thinking about after a fiction book about somebody that we know did a lot of not great things, but here we are. Next we have The Deep by River Solomon with David Diggs, William Hudson, and Jonathan Snipes. This is a short little novella about mermaids with the premise being that mermaids are the descendants of the slave women who were thrown overboard while pregnant. This one was fascinating. It looks at slavery and humanity and identity in such a different way that it's hard to ignore and I can't quite explain it but I really liked it because it was one of those where it should read really really fast and it does but you also have to stop every couple of pages to digest what you read and it it sort of throws you a little bit which I love in a book because if you can throw me some, something's going right and the last one is Lord Mansfield by Norman S. Poser. This is a nonfiction about one of the most memorable chief justices of the Court of King's Bench in England in the 18th century. Well, by then it would have been the United Kingdom because of the Act of the Union of 1707. Anyway, he is the reason we have many of the legal rules that we do today in the UK and the US, such as expert witnesses, attorney-client privilege, doctor-client privilege, that kind of stuff which was fascinating to read as a lawyer, and then also to read what decisions he made, when and why were also fascinating, and it really made me think about the law today and about how it's developed and how it's been applied and how we can change it and how we should change it. As I've mentioned in my December wrap-up, which I will link down below, one of my favorite chapters was when he talks about the Somerset and the Zong cases, both of which have to do with slavery, but Lord Mansfield did not make any sort of decision on slavery itself, which I thought was probably wise at the time, but also fascinating as to his reasoning behind not doing it, or the alleged reasoning, because I don't think we actually know precisely why he didn't. This book is somewhat thick. I think it's about 500 pages. Yeah, give or take. And it really, like I said, it just makes me think about the law today um, and how we got from 1780s to 2020 with many of the same rules and how little things have really changed 
and what we can do to, well, change that. Um, honorable mention to The Overstory by Richard Power, and I say honorable mention because I want to say I included it in either my best or my most memorable of 2018, but my Goodreads shows that I read it in 2019. So I think I must have finished it in 2019, but I'm fairly certain that I included it in my 2018 because I knew it was going to be one of my best. The Overstory is a story about trees and their lives, except through sort of human lenses. There's a whole cast of characters that are absolutely amazing. I did a book review on it, so I'll leave that link down below. But I just wanted to be sure and mention it somewhere because it is absolutely an amazing book. That's all I have, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!